What's up guys, Johnny here with Team Legit. Today we're gonna do an unboxing and a build video for a new product that we have. This is going to be the Team Legit 50. We haven't come up with an official name for it. If you guys have one, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Uh, I'm just gonna open the box and show you guys what comes with the kit, and then we're gonna jump right into the build. First thing you're gonna see is a checklist with all the parts that we've included. This checklist will also have the CG and a bunch of vital information that you guys may need. Next, we're going to have the Elbon stock pre-cut and tapered for you to just simply uh, paint, laminate, and attach to the wing. We also include the clevises and the control horns. You're also going to receive uh, control rods for this aircraft with the threaded clevises. You're also going to get the Coroplast GoPro box that we included in a lot of our uh, camera ships. However, most people don't use the GoPros anymore, so this is optional if you guys want to use that. We're going to be including the super durable camera skids. The uh, camera skids that we include are meant to protect your FPV camera for those unplanned landings or the landings in those spectacular fashions. Uh, you'll be protecting your FPV gear and the expensive recording cameras. You're also going to get huge fiberglass spars that will make your wing super rigid and super durable. These spars are one of the nicest ones that we've gotten in a very long time. They'll be included in all your kits. We'll be getting a total of six of them. You're also going to be receiving two pieces of Coroplast. You're going to be receiving the bottom of your bay and also a lid that will attach later on in this video. You're also going to be getting the Coroplast winglets. Uh, we may be redesigning these in the future, but right now we're going to be including the winglets that we know work. You're going to be getting enough laminate to laminate your entire wing. You're also going to be getting the motor mounts. These are two-piece motor mounts, perfect for adjusting your CG or getting your motor to work in many different fashions. These are made by Right Wing and licensed to use by Team Legit. And lastly, you're going to be receiving your wing. This is our new 50-inch camera ship platform. It will come pre-shaved, pre-sanded down for you with your spar channels already cut out for you on top. I'll show you guys how to do the bottoms later. It's also going to have a uh, etched area where you're going to include your servo and the bay area is also going to be cut out. I'll be showing you guys how to put this aircraft together. It should go together pretty quick. All of the measurements and everything you would normally be spending a lot of time on has already been thought out and planned for you. So this build should go together pretty quick. Alright, let's get started. Okay, before we get into the build, I want to talk a little bit about the components that I'm going to be using. For my control surfaces. I'm going to be using high-tech HS225MGs. You can go bigger if you like, but I wouldn't recommend going anything smaller than these. I also like the MGs because they take hangar rash a little bit better. For my power system, I'm going to be using a 2826 Cobra motor, and I would recommend something in the 1000 to 1400 kV. Remember, the higher the kV, the less efficient, but you'll probably be getting a lot more top end. Uh, for this application, I'm going to be using the 1130 kV. I'm also going to be using a Cobra 60 amp ESC. I'm going to be installing the Eagle Tree Vector. I'm going to decide later on down the build if I want to go with the full size vector, which I know will fit, or if I want to get down and a little more clean with the micro vector. And for control, I always like to use my Dragon Link copter receivers. They're just simple, very easy to use, but you can use any type of uh, long range receiver or if you're going to be using it as a proximity wing, a close range receiver that you trust. All right, some of the things you're going to need at first is you're going to need a hot glue gun with hot glue. We're going to be using the Amazing Goop to goop the wings together. I also got a flathead screwdriver. We're going to open up the spar channels. Grab a fresh snap blade for any kind of cuts and things that you're going to be doing. I'm also going to be using two uh, control rods that I had for a different project that I've sharpened up, and I'll show you what we're going to do with these later on. All right, guys, first thing we're going to do is we're going to glue our wing beds together. As you know, all of our wings come in their wing beds because we add a little bit of special stuff to the airfoil that makes it fly just a little bit more smooth. If you are limited on space, you can leave the top wing bed for later on in your project, or if you're like me, you can just glue them together now. All right, you may notice that your wing bed might not match on the bottom side, but all you want to do is make sure that it's glued together so that your airfoil swoop is flat and level on the front and also the back. And also, if your cut doesn't match completely, that's okay. You want to make sure that the swoop and the airfoil is correct. All right, now that our hot glue gun is nice and warm, we're going to glue the two halves together. All 
All right, now that we got our wing beds glued together, we have a foundation to start our build. Your airfoil should fit in the wing bed perfectly fine. If you place it in there and you see that the edges are not touching or some parts are raised, then you have it backwards. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our goop and we're just gonna goop the crap out of this thing. And as you guys can see, I'm using liberal amounts of this goop. Then I'm gonna take my two wings and rub them together in the front and the back. And as you guys can see, I'm working that goop in there. I'm gonna do the same thing here in the back. Okay guys, while I'm getting these guys kind of pushed together, good idea to have a sheet of wax paper. Got this in your kitchen, and I'll show you why in just a second. What I'm gonna do is make sure that my wings line up nice and flush. You'll notice that the channel lines are already cut. You wanna make sure that those sit nice and flat. And also, if you pull back on the foam right here, you'll notice that we've already cut out the spar channel, the main spar channel. So what I like to do is get this guy all nice and smooth, take whatever excess goop is here on the top and just kinda of work it in. And then do the same thing here on the front. I'm gonna take a piece of this wax paper and lay it down in the front and back. And this is so that my wing does not stick to the wing bed. All right, at this point we're gonna grab T-pins and you could use as many T-pins as you like. We're just gonna basically stitch the two wings together. We're gonna make sure that the airfoil is nice and smooth, that there's no gaps coming apart. At this point, I'm gonna take a little bit more goop and just run a nice bead of goop. Not too much, but just enough that I can kind of work it in this crack. And what we wanna do is we wanna make a nice seam right here down the middle. Now, when you're lining up the back of your wing, you want to make sure that the back half is nice and flat. If the cut in here is not flush, that's okay. We can adjust that later with the blade. Same thing goes with the front. We want to make sure that the nose is touching together nice and uh, flush. We have a nice sweep and then also the back is nice and flush as well too. So once I got that down, I'm going to take these T-pins and pretty much stitch the wing together. What I'm doing here is that I'm sticking them down in angles and they're going to hold the wing together. All right guys, as you can see, I've gone ahead and pinned my two halves together. They're lined up nice and flush with each other. And then I went ahead and put a little bit of goop right there in the seams. That goop will suck the two halves together. All right guys, at this point, it's pretty much a sit and wait situation. You wanna give it at least about an hour to two hours for the goop to cure, and a little bit longer for the bottom since it is touching wax paper. It's not getting that air flow. Uh, like the top is. Once this guy gets a little bit harder, then we can move on to the next step. If you guys are doing this at home, I'd give it about an hour to two hours to get really nice and dry, and then I'd flip it over or take it out of the wax paper and let the bottom have another about an hour, hour and a half to uh, also dry. And then we can move on to the next step, which is gonna be installing our spars. Okay guys, since I'm doing a power build, I'm not gonna wait for the full time for these to dry, but you guys at home should give it a little bit more time. So since the glue hasn't fully dried on the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it just so we can continue on the build. Guys, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you guys how to duplicate the spar channels on the bottom, just like they are on top. I've got two rods here and I've already gone ahead and sharpened them up. What I'm gonna do is just warm them up a little bit so they go through the EPP nice and smooth. I've got my little crack torch right here. And I'm just gonna slightly warm up the tip. They are sharp, but the warmer they are, the more smooth they'll flow through the EPP. What I'm gonna do is stick it here at the very, very tip, all the way down through the bottom. And as you can see, it sticks out through here. And I'm gonna push that through the front here. Now, if you have piano wire or something even thinner, that might be a little bit better. I just have these old control rods that uh, I use to burrow out channels and holes. And then we're going to do the same thing at the very end of the wing here. And now we've got a guide of exactly where to run the ruler and draw a line to put our bottom spar on the left side of the wing. I'm going to do the same thing on the right side and the main spar channel. So now if you see that I've put my ruler here against these two posts, I can take my pen. 
and now I know where to score to put my spar in place. Finding the center spar channel might be a little bit tricky because this was cut with a razor blade. So what you can do is just take your fingers and spread apart the foam right here behind the servo and you'll see exactly where that spar channel is. Alright guys, as you can see we've replicated the spar channels on the bottom like we did on the top and literally no measurement needed. All you got to do is just get some guides made. Alright, all we got to do now is take a snap blade, make sure that it's nice and sharp and all we're going to do is we're going to just go over this line that we just drew and you want this line about a quarter of an inch deep, maybe a little bit more. Uh, we've got these big thick spars that we're going to jam in there. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip my wing back over here and I'm going to go ahead and install the top spars and then I'm going to wait for that glue to dry, give it about another hour, hour and a half, then I'm going to flip my wing over and do the bottom spars. You guys should already be at a point in your build where the T-pins and all the stitches are already removed and you just start gluing things together. All right guys, we're going to be using these big fat spars and you're going to need a total of three on each surface. Uh, three on top, three on the bottom. Now these spars are longer than you're going to need, so there is going to be some trimming involved. And if you want to start with the main spar and just kind of measure where that's going to go, and as you can see it's going to go uh, right about here where the leading edge spar intersects, and then we're going to cut it about here where it intersects the other leading edge spar. And then our leading edge spars are actually going to go across and they're going to stick out the ends here and uh, that's okay. You can either choose to cut them now or you can cut them later. I always like to cut them uh, after I've inserted them. That way it gives me a little bit of room back here to uh, spin them. Okay, now if you've got the goop from us, you're going to get a nice sharp tip applicator and what you can do with that is cut it open down to about the second tier and what this will let you do is stick it into the spar channels and it'll also relax the spar channels a little bit more. What I also like to do is take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of work it and open up the spar channels just a bit more so that the spars slide in a little bit smoother. And a final tip, if you want to take a pair of pliers and just kind of pinch it down a little bit, that'll get it in there a little bit more sharp. So I'm gonna take the fine tip applicator and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this cavity up with goop. And as you can see, the goop kind of seeps out as I pass through because you can see the applicator opening up the foam, extracting goop, and then squeezing the goop back out the hole. All right, now we're gonna take our spar and it should slide right in there. I like to use the back of a screwdriver. Don't use a sharp tip to put the spars in because you will compromise them. Alright, once your spar is in place, you can kind of give it a quarter spin or just a half spin. Make sure that it's set nice and flush. And then I'm going to take my goop and run a bead right over it again. And I like to follow it up with my finger or a flat edge just to make sure that goop seeps in there and grabs the two edges. As you guys know, goop shrinks when it dries. So what that means is it'll grab the foam and suck the two pieces together to make a nice tight seal. And if you see later on that there's any kind of gaps or divots, you can go back through and fill them with goop. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other leading edge spar now. All right guys, now we're gonna do the center spar. And as you know, as you can see, I've already marked that spar here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Dremel cutting wheel. I like to use the Dremel cutting wheels because they cut nice and straight through the spar without fraying them. Uh, don't use any pliers or wire cutters or anything like that. Make sure you guys use a cutting wheel. Uh, if you guys don't have a Dremel cutting wheel, what you can do is take a razor blade and line it up on a flat surface and just roll it back and forth a bunch of times and it will eventually cut through and it'll make a nice clean cut. All right, now we've cut our spar down to size to fit along the center seam here. Just want to kind of do a quick semi-dry fit just to make sure that it is going to line up and it looks like we're good there. Don't throw away the excess that just came off. We're going to use this later on in the build. So you'll notice that the spar wants to raise in the middle or one of the ends. That's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to shove it down in there. And then we're going to take our T-pins 
and stitch it down. And I'm also going to do the same thing here in the middle. All right now the top of our wing is sparred up and now all we got to do is just wait for the glue to dry. All right guys moving on the bill. Uh, I've got the top of my wing sparse have already dried in the glue and now I'm going to move on to the bottom part. Real quick I wanted to take a moment to show you guys what I was talking about. If the wing beds don't line up don't worry as long as the top curves are done it's all you need because when this sits on a flat surface you want to be able to put pressure on the wing. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and flip it over, lay it down in the wing bed, and now I'm going to install the bottom spars. But before I do that, but before I do that, I'm going to grab my Dremel cutting wheel and I'm going to chop the spars off the ends. All right, we're going to do the same thing that we did on the top, but now on the bottom. Again, we're going to take two of our leading edge spars, we're going to sink them in with some goof, and then we're going to take our main spar, we're going to measure it, we're going to cut it and sink this also into the bottom. All right guys, moving on to the bottom bay of your wing. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get a Corplast bottom lid like this, and it should be pre-cut to fit pretty much centered here, but the lengthwise might be a little bit longer. So you might have to trim off the back if need be. This should be plenty long enough to fit most of the packs. We have some Team Legit packs that we custom made for this, and I also got some 6,000 Glacier packs that also fit in here in the four, in the four cell flavor. So what I'm gonna do is take this guy and know that it's about six and three quarters from edge to edge, about half an inch past the sides of the edges of the bay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark half an inch here, half an inch here, half an inch here, and here. So what now this will do is should line up to those half inch marks, and that'll give me a roundabout idea of where my bay is gonna fit, and it'll also help me line it up now, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and stick it out a little bit past the main spars. We can trim this corner off later, and I'll show you guys how to do that. But I'm gonna line up my, my bay bottom just about center here, and then trace it out. And this should give me plenty of space around the edges to cut and drop my bay lid directly into it, and it'll give me some space for the glue to grab. Now we're gonna take our sharp snap blade, and I'm gonna cut about a quarter inch deep or about four millimeters, the same depth as the coroplast. All right, once you've scored the outline of the bay bottom, what you're gonna do is take your blade and measure about four millimeters deep and simply just cut out the floor and again guys make sure you guys use a fresh snap blade now we can go ahead and pull this back. It's okay if you expose some of the corners of the spars here. And that should leave you a nice and that should leave you a nice recession to drop your coroplast bottom into. And as you can see, mine fits nice and flush right here. Go ahead and finish this up by gooping the crap out of this channel and shoving this guy down for a little bit better solid feel or if you're afraid this guy's gonna move around, you can stick T-pin straight in here. It's better to put them in a little bit of an angle so that when it goes in, it grabs. <laughs> All right, so as you see, I filled up the entire cavity with goop. So now I'm just gonna stick my bay lid down in there and I want the goop to seep up the sides here and down here in the front. Get it down nice and flush. I'm gonna take my T-pins and mount down my corners and my edges. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and notice that there's a lot of the goop that's kind of seeped out the edges right here, which is perfect. I'm just gonna take my finger, run down the edges here, make sure you don't stick your finger on any of the T pins that you stuck through there. And then I'm gonna take my goop and goop up all of my edges. And I'm not doing too much on the goop on the edges. I just wanna create a nice bead so that it seals and again, the great thing about goop is that 
when it dries, it suctions itself together and it creates a nice tight seal. All right, I'm gonna leave this back in my wing bed and I'm gonna give this about an hour to an hour and a half to dry. All right guys, as we move along the build, you guys can see that my bay floor has been glued in and ready to go. Now, earlier I had mentioned that when you cut the spars from the wing to save them, and in my rush to get this build video done, I forgot to mention that you can actually slide these into the flutes of the bay floors, and then if you score the location where the spars are gonna be, you can actually glue these spars in there. If you wanna get the aircraft just a bit more stiff, uh, you could do that, but my style of flying is more cruising, and I, I tend to try not to crash as much, uh, so I you know, opted not to do that. Another thing you can do too, if you're afraid this front part right here is gonna be a little bit weak, again, you could do the same thing. You just kinda line this up on the uh, bay floors, and just slice them down in there. Just go a little bit deeper than these spars. It's not gonna hurt anything, so long as you put enough goop in there, and you can slide these guys in um, as you do your bay bottoms. All right, so I'm not gonna go ahead and worry about that now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the next step, which is going to be carving out our servos. So for this, we're gonna need the bottom wing bed to support our wing. All right guys, as you can see, there's some squares etched out into the foam here. This is where we want you guys to put your servos. In previous builds, we'd always have to do some measurements and try to figure out you know, where's our servo gonna go, but we've done the thinking and taken it out for you. These squares pretty much should line up perfectly on each side. They're made in a template. So what you could do is you could pretty much line up your servos right against these squares, cut out the excess, pluck the foam and drop them in, which is what we're gonna do now. So as I mentioned before, I like to use the Hi-Tech HS225MGs. Um, they're just all around good servos and they're perfect for the size and weight. Before we install our servos, we're gonna have to do some prepping for those. And we'll go ahead and do that now. Another reason why I like to use the HS225s is they come with a really nice long servo wire. So if you want to embed your uh, servo wires into the wings, which I'm going to do, uh, it's got a nice long wire to get you into, uh, per se, your vector where I'm gonna be installing mine. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the round servo arms. Be mindful of the little washer that comes out of the servo. Most of the time these high-tech servos come pre-centered and they're really good at centering. So I don't, I try to be quick about just getting the arm on and off. But for this case, I'm gonna go ahead and center them using a servo center tool. And if you do like I just did right there, where when you go to take it off, you kind of move the servo off of center. So for now, I'm gonna just throw my screws and washers into the main bay. So we got a couple different options we could use for the servo arms. Uh, what I usually like to do is just clip half of this off and use the other half of the uh, straight servo arm. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and center our servos. I'm gonna be using my handy dandy servo tester. We do sell this in the store. Uh, just go ahead and ser search for servo tester. It's a great little tool and it's very inexpensive. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in one servo, plug in the second servo and now our servos should be pretty centered there and one thing you want to do is you want to make sure you make a right and a left servo so I'm what I'm doing here is I'm facing the two servos uh, wires together I'm gonna to take my control horn and I'm gonna slide it right onto the splines facing straight up I'm gonna take the other one and do the same thing. You'll notice that one of the servos sits completely straight up and down while the other one is off a little bit. I don't know why this happens, but it always happens uh, when I'm installing them. If you kind of move it over to the left or the right, you can see that both of them are off just a little bit. What we want to make sure is that they're as centered as possible and they have the same movement. Now that our servos are centered, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put the screws in, tighten them down, and get it ready to install. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and line up our servos using the square that's pre-punched in there, and just line up the back of the servo to that square. You wanna make sure that it's parallel to this spar. And then what I'm gonna do is just trace the servo all the way around. We're gonna come out straight off the back here. And I usually like to do a little curve or diagonal. You can go straight back here and then come off of the corner and then trace there. 
trace back there. Just want to make sure they're even on both sides. So as you can see, now we've got spot ready to go for our servo. We're going to take our snap blade and we're going to cut down. You want to go about as deep as the servo. Just, just cut through the trace that we just made. Again, having a sharp blade definitely makes a difference here. Now that we've got the area scored, there's two ways to carve out the channel here. You can do it the easy way with a pair of needle nose pliers where you pretty much just pinch the foam and just kind of give it a little turn and pluck it out. And you could do this around the whole area. And since we scored the edges, it's gonna be nice and flush all the way around. The other way to do it is using a Dremel with a depth guide. Pretty much what you do is you take the uh, Dremel grinder wheel or the router bit. You use your depth guide to go pretty much as deep as the servo. So we'll probably say about there. And make a nice flush servo cavity. And lastly, we're gonna take our blade. And as you can see, we've got the little ends that stick out right here. I like to leave those. Some people like to carve them off. Just take our blade. And score those guys. Now we've got a servo bay ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and I'll come back and show you a really cool trick on how to make a nice flush mount. All right guys, we're on to the next step. What I'm gonna do is show you guys how to route your wiring for your servos. And this is a way that I've kind of uh, learned over the years. One way to do it is to just cut a slit with the razor blade, sink the servo wire in there and then goop it back up. But this keeps the wire in there permanently. So a trick that I learned is I take a control rod. The good thing about our control rods is they're very nice and long. So we're gonna cut off the last quarter. Then what I do is I'll take the control rod, I'll sharpen up the tip nice and sharp with the grinder wheel. And then I'm gonna take a crack torch or any other torch that I've got. I'm gonna heat up the tip really nice and hot. And I like to use a torch that has a on fire off type thing. So that way I'm not setting it down and worrying about falling onto the foam. So once I get the tip very, very nice and hot, so what I'm gonna do is line it up and I'm gonna go straight shot right into the main bay, kind of in a downward angle. And as you can see, we've come out the other side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that cool off just a little bit. And then now the trick that I learned is don't heat up the tip again Go back a little bit because if you heat up the tip again, what it's going to do is it's going to carve a new channel. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually just heating up about an inch and a half back. I'm going to let that get nice and hot. It does take a little bit of experience. Another thing you could do too is before you glue the two wing halves together, you can cut out your servo bays and do it that way. You can come uh, straight in from the side here. So I'm going to heat up the last little bit. I'm going to find the previously used channel and I'm going to go all the way through again. But now that the tip is hot, as I start pulling back, it's going to burn off some of that EPP and make the hole just a little bit bigger. What I want to be able to do is feed some kind of a wire or chant something to get me into this bay so that I can pull the wire out through and uh, have a nice clean flat install. Now I can just take some of this semi-rigid wire, feed it all the way through to the other side, take a small piece of tape. And you should be able to just kind of work this guy through. And pull it out the other side. So now we've got a nice flush fit of the servo. So all I got to do is drop it down now and just glue it into place. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side and we'll move on to the next step. 
All right, guys, so as you can see, I've got my servo lines ran in here. I've got my big vector here. Just wanted to make sure that my uh, lines are gonna be long enough to reach it. I'm also gonna carve back here a little bit so I can embed the vector back a little bit further um, just to get a nice little bit cleaner flush fit. Uh, I'll reroute all the wires and everything later on as we go. Uh, real quick, before we move on, one thing that I like to do is before I laminate or when I get to that point, I like to glue my servos in, push the servo arms down, and I like to laminate over my servos. I also like to paint over them. Just gives it a nice cleaner finish. So what I'm gonna do real quick is pop my servos out, take some hot glue. Now when I'm applying hot glue, I like to put the hot glue around the edge of the box so it kind of streams down the sides. I like to put it on the little uh, parts right here that stick out to the side and then I'll put a lot on the flat surface trying to keep enough distance away that when I push the servo down the hot glue doesn't run down and mess with the control horn. Now as I'm pushing this guy down I'm also pulling my wire getting that maximum distance all right, now we can move on to the next step. We don't have to worry about our servos for a little while until we get to the part where we start making our connections. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of push the arms down so they don't snag or catch on anything uh, as I'm moving further on the build and also later on when I decide to flip the wing over to laminate the bottom half. Okay, guys, in the next part of this build, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create our bays for our uh, FPV gear. Now, usually what's happened in the past is we've had these GoPro boxes that go here on the front where they have the FPV cam on the left side and the GoPro camera here on the right side because the camera was always to the left. So we wanted to make sure we get a nice solid image right here in the middle. So we'd always put our video gear on the left side, our RC control gear on the right side, and I'm gonna keep with tradition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount my Dragon Link receiver out here on the far right of my aircraft, the 50 gives me a lot more room than some of the other planes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my Dragon Link copter receiver. Since I am running the vector, all I need is four wires coming from my Dragon Link, which is gonna be my ground, my five volts from the back of the ESC, which will then feed to the vector and the receiver, and the PPM input that's coming from the receiver, and also my RSSI. And we can do that later, uh, but right now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure the area where it's gonna go, and I like this spot here. I usually like to go parallel to these spars, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of trace this out right here. And I'm going a little bit longer than the actual receiver because I have to remember we have to be able to put pins in this thing. So it's gonna need some space. And I'll probably end up cutting a little bit wider just so that the uh, canopy that I'm gonna put on here later on, I'll show you guys what I do, uh, can fit on here nice and flush. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and use the lines here to guide me in. All right, now what I'm gonna do is just score it deep enough to be able to embed my Dragon Link receiver in there and also give me a little bit of room on top for the Coroplast lid that's gonna go on there later. All right, same thing that we did earlier for the servo. We're gonna take our Dremel cutting wheel with the depth selected. Our receiver's much thinner than the actual servo. So we're gonna go about there lock this guy down, and use the cutting wheel to dremel away the space that the receiver is gonna go into. All right, now that our bay is completed for our Dragon Link receiver, we can move on to the next step. All right, next we're gonna do our video transmitter side. Uh, just to mock up, I'm gonna use this 2.4 gigahertz video transmitter. Most video transmitters are about this big. But what I wanted to do is show you this SMA extension that I like to use. What I'll go ahead and do is put my VTX uh, somewhere about here. And what I'll do is take this SMA cable and embed it into the wing and glue it down. What this allows me to do is, if I wanna change out my video transmitter for a different frequency, I just open the cavity and put in a new one, thread it in, and then drop my SMA antenna on there. Also, this allows me to take the antenna off during transport. Say if I'm running 1.3 or anything else, I don't have to worry about damaging my antenna. So what I'm gonna do is create the bay first, and then we can route the SMA extension all right guys, we're pretty much almost done with most of the structural stuff that we're gonna do. We got our servos in, we've got our bays in. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the top wing bed, 
flip the wing upside down and we're gonna do one of the other most important parts, which is install our motor mount. The included motor mount is multi-purpose. What we like to do is use it for multiple aircraft. What I'm gonna do is line it up perfectly straight with the line down the middle of the aircraft. And then we're gonna trace it out. You wanna make the motor mount as flush as the main seam as possible. You wanna make sure it's as straight as possible. What I also wanna do after I trace it out is I'm gonna use these dots and I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch to the right and a quarter of an inch to the left. And what I'm doing basically is creating lines for where this guy is gonna bolt down to because we're gonna cut that out later. So now that we've got the motor mount area pre-fit and ready to go, we know that it's gonna goop in down here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Dremel cutting wheel and I'm gonna get it down to the same thickness as the motor mount plate, very, very minute. It's about uh, two millimeters at the most. And I'm gonna take that Dremel cutting wheel and I'm gonna carve this out and make a nice flat flush finish. Now there's a couple other options you can do if you want to. You could simply take the motor mount and attach it to the bottom and just goop it down nice and flush. Just make sure you tape it down or you hold it down that it stays where it needs to stay. Another thing you could do is you could take your flat blade if you like and cut down the middle of the seam or as close to the bottom as possible. In our previous videos what we used to do is cut down right in the middle of these. What we've noticed is with our newer airfoils we want to keep the motor mount as low as possible because they run a slightly bigger motor. They use the taller holes on the motor mount, so we want to make sure our thrust line is as low as possible to the actual aircraft. So you could also, if you wanted to, take a uh, very thin piece of plywood or something and just tape it down to the bottom and use that as your guide to either shave off the bottom or slice down in the bottom. If you wanted to run your motor mount, perhaps right along this line, you could do that as well if you wanted to. But since I've got my Dremel, I'm just gonna shave the bottom half and goop the motor mount directly to the bottom. All right, for this, we're gonna again use the snap blade to uh, put our guides in there, but I'm gonna go very, very shallow. Now, the only reason I'm doing the cuts here is so that when I do the Dremel, it doesn't pull away from the edges of the foam. All right, we're gonna take our Dremel. All right guys, now that I've got this shaved down to where I'm going to be dropping my motor mount, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut out the center block and that's gonna allow our motor mount to fit on the top. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna line the motor mount up right in here. We're gonna line up the holes and we're gonna put little, we're gonna score it right off the edges of this motor mount. And then we're also gonna stick it back here, kind of sticking off the back. And again, we're gonna score it. And now that we removed our motor mount, we're gonna line up the dots that we just made. And now we know we're gonna cut that part of it out. It's better to do this now rather than later because you want to be able to cut all the way through rather than hitting aluminum plate. And if your blade's sharp enough, you should be able to cut right through. Don't worry if you go all the way through to the wing bed because we're not gonna need that later on. And then we're gonna take our blade and we're just gonna cut the front of it off and you should be able to remove the block right from the actual wing. And we see that our motor mount can be glued in this way. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and just make sure that our motor mount fits. And we've got a nice solid fit, perfect. All right, before I glue in my motor mount, at this point what I like to do is, uh, I like to do some fancy beveling here in the back, as Josh likes to call it. What that pretty much means is, I like to take my blade and take away these corners and give the back of the wing a nice smooth finish so that when the air is flowing over the wing and the prop is coming through, it's not really loud and it's not making that super choppy noise. So what I like to do is take the blade and just cut the back of the wing off here, as you can see. And if you wanna get a little fancy, you can take some off of this area as well. Now you don't have to do this part at all. This is just a little aesthetics that I like to do. And it also helps with the sound. And then I'm gonna take a sanding block and just smooth out the sharp points. All right guys, so I'm just get the point where I've done all the aesthetic little cuts and little cleaning and I've went ahead and rounded off some of the edges. All I'm doing now is just filling the motor bay area with some goop. 
And I'm gonna take my motor mount and just stick it into place, nice and flush, making sure it's nice and straight also. And I'm just gonna work this goop all over the plate, blend it into the foam. I'm gonna put a little bit of goop here at the top and I'm gonna let that sit for a few hours. Now, this has been a speed build, so I've been moving quickly on a lot of the steps. This is one of the steps where I'm just gonna let it sit at least for about an hour, hour and a half, and let that goop dry nice and uh, solid. There is a lot of goop, so there's a lot of xylol that needs to evaporate from the actual goop. And again, during that evaporation process, it's gonna suck that motor mount down and embed it into the wing, so it's not gonna come out. All right, while this dries, I'm gonna think of a really cool paint scheme and uh, we'll get back to you guys shortly. Okay guys, at this point, your motor mount should have dried completely, so we got a nice solid finish. This motor mount's not going anywhere and it's gonna do a lot of the work for getting this aircraft in the air. Uh, so at this point now, we're pretty much ready for the structural parts of the aircraft. The only thing left to do now is paint. So in the past, what we used to do is paint the aircraft and then spray it with some crystal clear uh, spray adhesive, some M77 or like a light adhesive but Chris at Right Wing turned us on to a new method. Now your aircraft will come pre-sanded, so most of the fuzzies will be off, the leading edge will be rounded and everything. What I like to do now is just take a sanding block, and just kind of go over everything and just smooth everything out and get it nice and cleaned up, get all the little strays and everything like that uh, off of the aircraft. Then we're gonna take some of this high strength 3M90 adhesive and we're gonna coat this entire wing in this adhesive and we're gonna let that dry. After it's done drying, then we'll use some light 3M masking tape to tape up our lines or edges and we're gonna apply the paint then. All right, so I'm gonna go coat this aircraft in this 3M90 and then I'm gonna use the spray paint. Now, if you guys don't wanna use the 3M90 or you're just being lazy or you just uh, want a quick uh, build, you can use any kind of spray paint you want. You can use Krylon, you could use uh, Rust-Oleum, any spray paint you want, just know that most wings are inherently uh, tail heavy when built just because of the surface area where the CG is. So when you apply loads and loads of paint, you could end up making your airplane tail heavy. So try to keep light coats and try to make sure that the uh, areas that you do paint are not done too heavy. Another thing you can also do if you want to skip the 3M90s, you can paint your aircraft in Plastidip and Plastidip also adds the same type of grip that the 3M90 does. As far as your elevons go, you could just use any kind of spray paint. You don't have to do any kind of uh, special adhesives or anything like that. Uh, just paint them down and then laminate them. All right, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and coat this aircraft in the 3M90, and then we'll be back to uh, continue on the build. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and taped off my servos. I put some paper and some tape around the edges of the uh, bay because I don't want to get uh, the inside coroplast painted. I don't want to paint the inside of the coroplast. So I'm going to take this 3M90. This stuff comes on like uh, very stringy and very like gooey kind of. And I'm just going to go ahead and coat the whole airplane in this stuff. It's going to get pretty gross. And as you guys can see, it just comes off like string. It actually almost even looks like silly string. Right now, if you touch it, it's gonna be kind of sticky and kind of uh, gunky, but what we're gonna do is let this dry. Once it completely dries, I would say in about an hour, it should be nice and solid. It'll kind of feel like a uh, light snow glaze over the aircraft. It's kind of gross to work with right now, but once it dries, it'll come out really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and just flip it over real quick. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. All right guys, we're all done with the paint job. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, I just pretty much took a piece of paper and just cut out a little bit of triangles, taped it to the front, hit that with some red, and then uh, went through, put some blue stripes on it. Looks rather murka if you ask me. On the bottom side, we just made it all nice and red. I added some black stripes. I wanted to make a wing that's nice and visible so that when we're doing tandem flying, the guys who are in the back following from on top can see my aircraft, or if I start climbing or dropping, they can see it that way as well. As far as the elevons, I just went ahead and painted them with some Krylon spray paint. Uh, one coat is usually enough for these. And now we're gonna go ahead and start laminating. This is a very key point where you're gonna need the wing beds because as you can see, the aircraft kind of teeters and totters on the table. And if you start applying pressure to one side or the other and you, you end up laminating, you could warp the wing. So this is where the wing beds really come into play. So 
So I'm gonna start by laminating the top. I always do the top first because the top is the part that you want it nice and flush. You don't want any seams rolling over the top or the bottom. So what I usually like to do is take my laminate and we give you guys a lot of extra laminate. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay it down. All right, so I've got my laminate laid down and I'm just gonna kinda go through and you know, open it up, push it apart. I usually like to leave about half an inch to uh, three quarters of an inch on the left side here or the right side, doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and my blade. Now, this part is really important as well to use a fresh blade and also a really nice sharp scissors. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch to about half an inch on the side here. All right, so we've got it laid down here. And then as far as the back end, I'll probably leave about, a, about an inch laying off the back. So we've got about an inch here off the back and about quarter of an inch to half an inch on each side. Get it down nice and flush. And then what I like to do is just go through and inspect it real quick. Just make sure I don't have any stragglers like here. I'll pull off any little pieces of dust or uh, little things that might have gotten caught underneath the laminate. Get it down nice and flush. Then I'm gonna grab my laminating iron, make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, a lot of times these laminating irons will fall on the floor and the tip will bend. If that happens, I usually grind it down or file it down to make it nice and flush. And once I've got this laid down pretty much where I want it to be, I'm gonna start by tacking down right here in the middle. What this is gonna do is seal the laminate so it doesn't start to flex or move around. And then from here, we're gonna orbit our way out. If you imagine a body of water and you drop some ink or some dye in it in the middle, you always notice that it starts to orbit out. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way out from the part where we tacked it down. Another thing to remember when you're laminating is don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get around and then come back around because that's how wrinkles are formed. So you don't want to create any bodies or any pockets of uh, laminate. So from here, you just want to orbit as far away as possible and uh, try to keep up with where you're at. So now that we're coming down here, we want to start making this the epicenter and start moving away with the laminate. So I'm going to go through and laminate this real quick. If you guys want to follow along, go through it. Um, I'm going to try to stop at key points where it needs to be cut and uh, open up different parts where they need to be relieved. Every now and then you'll see me pull back the laminate to pick away at little, little stragglers or things that got under it because once you laminate this thing, it's in there forever. All right guys, as you can see, the lamination for the top is uh, laid out pretty nice and it, came, it actually comes out really good. It makes that color really pop. So as you can see, the blues and the reds got really bright and sharp and the white that had that kind of huey, hazy uh, M90 just came back to normal white. So um, at this point, we've got the top completely laminated. Now the wing, as you see, has a nice sharp point to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start cutting some relief. And what you do is basically just take your blade, cut straight down forward, and you could pull it back just as much as you need to. Take the lamb and just stick it down. I'm not too concerned about the nose because I'm probably gonna end up cutting this off to put my GoPro or my uh, FPV cam up there, but I just want the lamb to go down nice and flush. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna use the top wing bed. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna kinda of go through, make sure we don't have any stragglers. And then we're gonna pull the lamb over the top here. Just get a nice fitment. I'm gonna trim down any parts that I feel like are gonna cause wrinkles. Just kinda of pluck that out of there. And then we're gonna pull the other piece over. You're gonna notice that it's not completely covered. That's okay, we're gonna come back. We've got extra laminate. We're gonna fix all these. This is why I like to do this on the bottom. We're not gonna roll the front yet, and I'll show you why in just a second. What we're gonna start doing is creating all of our reliefs for the back end of the wing. So what I like to do is right here in the corners, kind of come back in a diagonal. So what I'm doing is just bringing it back here in the middle. And as you can see, when I flap that over there, 
it should fit in there. We are gonna have to cut some more reliefs uh, to kind of open it up and let it flow over a little bit better. So I'm gonna just cut one piece right here down the middle. So now as you see, that should fit over with minimal wrinkles. This will also fit over with minimal wrinkles and then we'll trim all the rest here in a bit. I'm gonna take this back corner off and when I fold this over, I can get it down in there. And then now I got a nice flat flush piece back here. I'm gonna do the same over here. Got that guy flowing over nice and flush. All right, until we get over to the bottom, what I'm gonna do is be lifting the aircraft on and off the wing beds because I wanna roll that lamp over the edge. So what I'm gonna do here is flip it back over and just kinda do the trailing edge right here real quick. Without pulling on the lamp, I'm just gonna kinda hit the corners flat here. And I'm just gonna tack it down right here in the middle. All right, so now that we've got this guy rolled over on the edge here, what we could do is just kind of, without pulling on the lamb, just kind of work this trailing edge. And then once we get it over, we're gonna roll this top corner right here as well. And we're gonna start to tack it down. Again, we're working our way from the middle. At this point, since we don't have a flap over, if you get close to the edges, don't let the lamb, don't let the laminating iron hit the aircraft because one, you can mess up your paint, and two, you're gonna get gunk on here and it's not gonna slide smoothly. So what I like to do is just kind of leave very, very little bit off the edges here. And then when we flap our piece over, we can use the top to apply heat to get this to stick down nice and flush. And then we're gonna pull our corners. Same thing, I'm lifting the aircraft up and I'm letting the laminating iron roll the edges. All right, now we're gonna roll the front half on. And as you guys can see, I did the back half. And the reason for that is when you roll the back on, the airflow is going this way and it has less stuff to catch against. All right, same thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lift it out of the wing bed and we're gonna use our laminating iron. And we're gonna just simply hit the leading edge and just slowly start working our way back. And as you guys can see, the red is starting to pop out. All right, guys, I'm gonna use the lamb that we had extra to create the little patches that we were talking about. And I'm just gonna put a piece right down the middle here. And then I'm gonna use the other long piece here for the very ends. Make sure we got plenty of coverage over the top and it looks like we're gonna have really nice coverage. All right guys, now that the lamination is pretty much done, what I'm gonna do is just cut out and do some reliefs for some of my crevices like the motor mount area, my main bay lid, and my VTX and RX lids. I'm also gonna take my blade and just pretty much slice right over the servo arm. That way when I activate it, it comes up. And as you guys noticed, remember earlier, I laminated my servo in there. So now I've got a nice streamlined feel right over my servos. All right guys, while we still got the laminating iron hot, we're gonna go ahead and laminate our elevons. For laminating the elevons, we've given you guys plenty of laminate, so what we're gonna do here is first, we're gonna grab some of the laminate, we're gonna make sure that it goes over the uh, elevon with, some, with plenty of slack, and then I'm gonna cut this so we got less to work with. So we know that amount should be plenty for that elevon, and that amount should be plenty for this elevon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the extra off. Also, we're gonna, be nice and tight on the edges, so I'm gonna take that off as well. And right there, 
All right, for my elevons, I do the same thing like I do with the wing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top of our elevon, and you'll notice the top because it'll kind of have like a beveled edge, and you want that beveled edge to hit the side of the wing. So we're just gonna take our elevon, lay it face down, right here in the middle. Make sure that we've got plenty of the laminate to flip over each one of the sides. We're gonna take our laminating iron. We don't have any critters underneath. And we're just gonna lay the laminating iron real quick, just right along the top. So now we got a nice, beautiful top, and we're gonna do, again, all of the overlapping and the cuts on the bottom. When I work with my elevons, I always like to work with the back first and fold that up and over, and then bring the front edge nice and flush over the top. And that way, again, when the air is traveling over the elevon, you don't have any lips where the air can catch. Elevons can be a little bit tricky because there's a lot of different corners and bends and turns, so you got to cut some relief for those. First thing I see is we've got a flat edge here, and then it curves, and then a flat edge here, and then it curves again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, cut out the relief right there, cut out the relief for that corner, and there. Now we can see that when we lay the laminate over the elevon, we've got a nice flat edge here, and it doesn't wrinkle or buckle. We're not going to need it to go over the other edge, so what we're going to do is we're going to shave this down a little bit. We're going to do the same thing with this flat edge. All right, there it is. We've got the completed elevon for the left side of the aircraft. I'm going to go through and do the other side, and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and I've cut out all my bay lid, so I've got my main bay lid ready to go here. I'm not going to glue it in yet because I'm going to be working in the main bay installing my vector and other electronics. I've also got the bay lids for my VTX and also my receiver. So again, I'm not going to glue these down until the end. Once I've got everything buttoned down, then we'll go ahead and put down our bay lids. I also may add a splash of paint to these just so they don't look so bare. But for now, we're going to move these aside and we're going to move on to attaching the elevons. Okay guys, attaching the elevons and making the linkage to the servo is probably my most undesired part of a build, but I know that once that's done, that uh, the build is almost done as well too. So the way to do this is, we're gonna take some weight on our actual aircraft, and we're not gonna use the wing beds to do this. So what I'm gonna do is put down some weight to hold the aircraft down on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my elevon to the rear surface, and we're gonna make sure that it's got a little bit of space on the very wing tip because we're going to have a winglet here and we don't want it to bind or budge against it. And then on the inside here can be lined up perfectly as well too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 3M heavy duty packing tape and I'm going to stretch it out really nice and long. And I'm going to attach it to the table here. Then I'm going to take my scissors. I like to use these X-Acto scissors. They're nice and sharp. And I'm going to cut off about one inch, one and a half inch pieces. And I'm gonna do two of those. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these pieces. Now these are gonna be my guide tape. So what they're gonna do is basically just hold the elevon in place while I do the hinges. So the way I like to do this is have the aircraft sticking off the back here. And you can kind of do it with the elevon with some down deflection if you like. And I'm gonna add the tape about two thirds down on the edge here and then about another third on the edge here and I'm going off of this surface because the elevon has a tapered edge back here so I'm, I'm moving completely perpendicular to the seam and now we've got our elevon attached basic attachment now what we're going to do is this is a little trick Chris click over at right wing taught me is I'm going to cut small, maybe three quarters of an inch pieces. And we're gonna take those pieces and slice them in half. And then we're gonna take the two sticky parts and attach them to each other. You can see like so. And now we've got two sides that are sticky. We've got a bottom sticky and a top sticky. And I'm just gonna take this down right here and slide it right in the middle, right up next to my Elevon hinge. And then while Making sure that the elevon is nice and flush, I'm gonna attach that hinge. Next, we're gonna do it again. So I'm gonna to attach to the wing first, and then I'm gonna push the elevon in, and I get a nice tight seal. 
Now, depending on how long the control surface is, I may do multiples in different areas. So for this long control surface, I'm doing two facing back, and I'm gonna do two facing forward, and then I'm gonna go back and do the same thing on this one. And as you can see, I'm alternating. I'm doing one forwards and one backwards, meaning that one is attaching to the actual wing and one is attaching to the elevon. All right, so once you're done making your hinges, I'm gonna take a nice long piece of tape and I'm gonna attach it right here to the back of the wing, making sure I get about 50% coverage on the wing and 50% uh, overlap onto the actual elevon surface itself. And then what I'm gonna do is, while deflecting the elevon down, Go ahead and apply the tape. And as I get close to the edges, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the Elevon over. And if you have a friend or somebody to help you out, what we'd like to do is pull the Elevon nice and tight against the wing. Make sure that the surface is nice and flat. And we're gonna add another piece of tape just like we did on the top. All right, so have your friend or somebody uh, extra just hold the aircraft to the Elevon nice and tight here, trying to reduce as much gap as you can from there, and also the other side as well. Again, we're gonna take some tape. And I always like to put the tape on the wing first. Make sure it's on there nice and smooth. And then I'm just gonna roll it right in the middle here onto the actual Elevon itself. And then again, don't forget to cut the extra off so you don't have it folding over the top. And then just make sure that the tape is secured nice. And now we've got a nice tight Elevon. We've got a nice smooth finish over here. There's no lip or any gaps or anything. And you're now ready to attach your servo to your Elevon. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do the other side and then we'll move on to the next step. All right guys, I'm back uh, with the build. At this point, I've gone ahead and done a lot of the assembly. Most of it is pretty straightforward. I went ahead and bolted my motor to my motor mount and I put my motor in here, done a quick dry fit just to make sure that I'm getting my CG. For my particular case, I'm gonna be running the GoPro Hero 5 Sessions camera and I'm gonna be running a Runcam Swift, uh, the Swift 2 I believe this is, uh, or the Swift. They're all in pretty much the same form factor. We will be designing a TPU mount for different cameras. We do have the Team Legit um, GoPro Hero camera mount, the blunt nose mount. That also takes a session. You can swap cameras in and out. And this would just cut and drop right in there. But for this particular build, I'm gonna keep it nice and clean. I've also gone ahead and painted my bay lids. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stick those on here shortly. I'm also gonna install my winglets. We'll get into that here shortly. But uh, if you guys wanna get in here, I wanna show you a little bit about my setup. What I've done here is, uh, as stated earlier, I've run my Dragon Link copter receiver. I really like these receivers. There's four simple wires. And this guy is basically installed in here. I've got my RSSI, my PPM, my five volts that's going to be coming in from the ESC, and my ground wire. I've got my Dragon Link copter receiver installed in here with a hole popping out the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is just run this ground wire down in here and just tape it back. When I install my lid here, I'll also pop a little hole here and I'll hot glue down the uh, straw to keep the uh, antenna wire vertical and that'll be pretty much seated. I won't really have to get in here much unless I'm changing firmwares or anything like that. And this will just be simply taped on with some heavy duty packing tape. Uh, I've run my GPS out here on the side just as an auxiliary because I'm not sure if I want to run uh, 1.2, 2.4, 5.8. I just want to keep the receiving side of things separated from the transmission side. As you guys can see in the center bay here, I've got the full size vector. You could opt for a micro vector if you want to run uh, maybe larger batteries or if you want to run dual batteries. You'll pretty much get half that space back to run those bigger batteries. You can also carve this forward a little bit more if you want to slide things in there. Um, as you guys can see, I've got my GPS wire here burrowed through just like we tunneled all the other wires. So it's nice and clean. I've also got my current power sensor, which I'm going to install the uh, ESC running directly into here and plug it into the PSU module. And this guy will get tucked away in there. And then I'll have an auxiliary lead so I could just plug my XT60 directly in there. Coming in here on the video side, I've got my VTX wire coming in here and also my FPV camera. My VTX wire drops in here and I just have a simple servo connector and that way I can do hot swaps if I want to change out different transmitters. I've taken the hot wire and carved out little channels here where I've stuck the FPV wire. Now with most of your FPV cameras you're going to get a couple different wire sets. What I like to do is take the wire that has the RCA connectors, simply cut them off and solder a uh, servo lead into it and it gives it a nice clean look where you don't have to worry about extra wires. 
I've left a little bit of slack up here in the front, so if I do want to pop this camera out, I can do that, and the wire can be pulled out so I can connect the uh, Night Eagle in there. And that just kind of fits nicely in there. When I stick my battery here in the bay, there's no tension or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to be running my ESE up here. I'm going to run these guys. I'm going to put some bullet connectors on here, so we'll run that in there. All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and install our control rods. Uh, as you can see, I've got my two control rods here, and I've already threaded the clevises on there. What I'm going to do is basically install the clevises on the servo end of it, and then I'm going to measure back. I'm going to take the included nylon Dubro control horns and basically just install them back here into the Elevon. Uh, and it should fit pretty much straight up and down with the servo arm so you want to make sure this guy articulates in this direction there's also a carbon fiber sleeve that we're going to throw over this with some heat shrink and that'll keep this rod from flexing and it'll give you a nice solid control link so i'm going to go ahead and install that now okay before we install these i like to prep them what you want to do is basically take a blade and cut the little molding nipples off and make it nice and flush just a little personal preference then we're going to take this guy and we're going to line it up right about here we want to make sure that this guy moves in a straight line and fashion and that it's not binding on any of the spars or anything like that next what i'm going to do is i'm going to level my elevon make it nice and flat and just give it just a little bit of up trim and then i'm going to mark my control rod to see where i'm going to put that z-bend now you could use a pair of pliers to use a z-bend or if you have the actual z-bend tool you can put a z-bend once you've done that then you can use the threaded here to adjust those fine tune adjustments. Once you power on your vector and you get your aircraft all centered, you do your stick controls and everything like that, you get it all centered, you can go back through mechanically and change these to make sure that they are uh, nice and flush. You wanna give them just a little bit of up trim. The way I try to measure my up trim is, if you put a flat edge right here, you wanna be able to see a little gap. And uh, I would say about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half gap in between the elevon and the wing. So right about here would be pretty good. So if you can make sure you can see some light through there. So once you've made the Z-Bend, you can just go ahead and take a pair of dikes and just cut the end of the control rod off. Now we're gonna go ahead and stick our control horn in. Now if you find that the control horn is a little bit too big, what I like to do is take a uh, lighter and heat up the part that we just cut off and if you get it just warm enough, you can actually stick it right in through the hole that you want to go into and uh, just kind of work it real quick and get a nice flush fit. You want to make sure you kind of move through it kind of quickly so you don't get a lot of slop. And now this guy should fit directly into there and we get the nice turn. Now we can line it up. Now an easy way to mount this in there, what I like to do is kind of get it lined up to where it wants to be right here in the middle, and then I take these old precision screwdrivers that I've got, and I will just pop a hole right through the balsa. The balsa's pretty soft, so you should be able to get right through. And then I'll take my second one, once I know exactly where they're gonna go, and that they're lined up properly. Make sure they're going straight down, because you're gonna have a tough time on the other end. And just pop them through. If you wanna be a little more precise, you can get a fine drill bit, and just drill the hole through there. Then I'm going to pull the one screw out that we originally put in there and I'm going to take the screws that are included in the control horn kit and drive it right through the balsa. Okay, you can pull that guy out and take the other one, drive that one through. And then we're going to take these back plates and just thread the screws right into those back plates. Alright guys, as you can see, I've got the control surface completed. We've got the servo connecting to the clevis. It's threaded in here and we've got the right amount of adjustment to where that when the servo arm is sitting completely up and down there's a little bit of reflex right here and we can do the fine tuning in the radio. Uh, I'm gonna leave the heat shrink off right now. I'll go ahead and tighten that down after I do the maiden flight and I finish it up and I figure this is gonna work. In case I need to take it off I want to just leave it. But this is negligible to leave it like this right now. The worst is it may rattle or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the other side and connect that guy and then we'll move on to the next step.
All right guys, I've already gone ahead and installed my motor and I just installed my ESC. I'm gonna be running this Gecko 65 amp ESC. This is the first time I'm gonna be trying this ESC but it looks very promising and I've got it installed here in the bay. What I'm gonna end up doing later on after I glue down my lid is probably cut out a little hatch to get some nice airflow going over it and I'll also probably 3D print a little tower that'll hold the ESC up over the vector. Uh, the ESC shouldn't mess with the vector or anything like that. It's away from all the electronics that really need anything uh, um, electromagnetic or anything as you would say. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill up this entire front end up here with goop. I'm going to pin down my bay and then we're going to move on to the winglets and I'm going to show you guys a trick on how to glue on your winglets. After this pretty much we should be close to done. We're going to need to program our vector, uh, set up our receiver and transmitter system, go through the wizard and then install our VTX. I haven't picked a frequency yet but we can do that later on in the video. All right, let's go ahead and start by gluing on our lid. Now that all the stuff inside is done and we're pretty much good under the hood. And just like we did before, I'm just gonna lob it up with goop. And I'm using an excessive amount because I want this to seep out and get a good contact. That should be pretty good there. Also, if you guys remember, we cut these corners out, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of goop here. I'm sure the rest of it will kind of flow out of the corners there. Go ahead and press down nicely and as you guys can see it's seeped out. I got my handy T-pins here and I'm going to kind of T-pin down these corners after I get the goop over because I want that to stick and I'm going to let this sit overnight because this guy is very important to get it to stay. Believe it or not the bay lid also adds a little bit of strength for the actual aircraft. Alright now that we've got our bay lid tack down. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to move it around or make any adjustments until after it's completely dry. And then once I'm done, I'll probably put a little piece of heavy duty packing tape over the front here just to help with the uh, goop. All right, moving on to the winglets. I got a really easy way to help you guys get these winglets installed. Okay, for the winglets, I like to use these extra long uh, T-pins. And what I'll basically do is line up the winglet right to the very tip of the leading edge making sure that the point is lined up with the leading edge of the aircraft and uh, it's at its apex so there's going to be a little bit of winglet coming down the bottom and, a, and most of it's going to be here on top then I'm going to take my T-pin and just guide it in we're going to go right along the flute here and about a little over halfway Okay, so now we've got a guide to help us hold the winglet into place. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stick it on here right on that leading edge. I'll get the winglet leveled up with the uh, airfoil. And I'm going to push the T-pin about halfway. And then what you can do is pull it back a little bit. So now that you can see we've got a little gap and fill this entire crevice with goop. I'm going to do the top and the bottom here. All right, so as you guys can see, we filled up the crevice there with some goop on top and bottom. Now that we have the T-pins to help align it, all you got to do is just slide the winglet into place and then push down on the T-pins to lock them in. And then what I like to do is take my finger and run the goop down the seam right here, top and bottom. As you can see, it's kind of splooged out the bottom here as well. You don't want the winglet to sit in front of the leading edge because that'll cause it to wag. And if you want to help tack it down just a little bit more, you could just use right down the line right here. Use another T-pin. And as you guys can see, my winglet is on there nice and secure. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side as well. And then we're going to let this sit and dry till tomorrow. Alright guys, uh, we've given the wing an overnight dry, so the winglets have completely dried on there. My Coroplast bay door is now completely dried. Um, after the goop dried completely, I pulled out all the little T-pins that were holding it in place, and I just put a sheet of heavy duty packing tape right across the nose. Um, it's down on there, nice and tight. I went ahead and um, cut some slits right here on the sides of my GoPro sessions. 
So I can just go ahead and Velcro those down with the Team Legit battery strap. My Runcam Swift is just free floating in here. Um, like I said, as we speak, I'm working on designing a new TPU style mount for uh, different GoPros, the Hero and the Runcam 3 that's coming out in the same form factor. And it'll basically mimic what's going on here, but it'll be all nice and rubber. We'll have some nice bumpers for that. I went ahead and mounted my ESC here inside the bay and we got a 3D printed little shelf right here, sitting right on top of the vector. I'll probably end up cutting out a little bit of uh, air relief right here so we can get some airflow over it. But I think the 65 amp ESC with the uh, 1200 kV 2826 Cobra motor should do the trick. As you guys saw earlier, I got all my wires all nice and tucked away. I'm going to be running this Glacier uh, 4S 6000. I do have plenty of room up here if maybe I want to run a 5S later on down the line. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I haven't chose my video transmitter yet, but I'll be installing one in here. Uh, ready for the maiden. Got my drag link set up. Got all of our control surfaces done. This pretty much concludes the build. And uh, only thing left to do now is maiden. Just another side note, guys. This took me about two solid, two and a half solid nights to build. Um, I have a little cold. I don't know if you guys can tell in my voice. So I didn't come in one of the days. But uh, I started this build, I believe it was uh, Monday night. And uh, came in a little bit more on Tuesday night. And uh, didn't come in the next two days because I was sick. And last night I worked on it for about another three or four hours. I would say all in all, this is probably gonna take you about 10, 10 solid hours of working. That doesn't include dry time. That doesn't include any time for the paint to dry, but about 10 hours of solid working, uh, You know, putting everything in, putting things into place. It may take you guys a little bit longer if you've never built a wing, uh, just kind of thinking about where things go. And if you guys do you know, build a wing, it's always nice to think about your cuts before you make them and just take your time, measure twice, cut once, um, you know, use quality parts if you are going to be building these wings. I recommend the high-tech servos. We will have a power package for this available that you can order along with it. I really like the color scheme. I'm very excited to get this out and fly and get you guys some footage. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you guys for tuning in for the super long video. Hopefully I did put you guys to sleep. Um, and furthermore, if you guys are watching this video, it means you did buy one of these wings. We want to thank you guys for your support. And uh, hopefully you're out there getting that epic footage. With Team Legit, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching. If you guys like seeing these videos, don't forget to click the like button. And also, if you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Uh, we do a lot of tutorials, build videos. We bring you guys reviews. And as much as we can, we try to bring you some epic flight footage and some pretty cool locations. This is going to be my new flagship plane. I'm going to try to get as much epic footage with it. We're going to do some road trips, try to hit up some events, and uh, show off these wings.